Ja, herzlich willkommen zur neuen Ausgabe SI Talk und bei mir ein Startinterview Fiore Gold. Ich habe schon mehrmals über die Company berichtet, weil es mir extrem gut gefällt. Hat sehr gute Zahlen, gute Ergebnisse geliefert, ist billig und ich habe heute den CEO bei mir am, am, über Skype, über, Skype über Zoom äh, zugeschaltet. Äh, er lebt in Toronto und äh, ja, bin ich gespannt, was er uns erzählt. Er wird uns einmal die Story vorstellen. Uh, Tim, thank you to have time and I said in my German introduction, this is our first interview, so we never done yes. one bef before, but I follow your story um, the last few months, uh, especially with, uh, with uh, the good results what you're coming up. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, one, one, one friend of mine, he's uh, Jochen Steiger, he, he always say highly recommend the stock and say, hey, that that's, is uh, fantastic. So, and uh, I'm, to be honest, the valuation trigger me uh, so that that is really you have a cheap valuation uh, yeah. and and but before we come into this cheap valuation why we have this cheap valuation uh, please can you give us a rough overview about your company yeah so it's a, a relatively new gold producer um, the US based gold producer we started with the uh, well, three assets actually that we purchased from a bankruptcy auction. So there was a, a, a previous company that had gone bankrupt in 2015 um, and we purchased the assets in 2016. And what we purchased was a mine that had just been built in Nevada. We purchased a right next door, a development asset and then a, a third property in Washington state. And the, the first order of business was to turn around the, uh, the mine. Um, so we got that uh, up and running. Uh, the way we wanted it to in 2017, in September of 2017, and it's been running really well ever since. We produce, it's a small mine, we produce sort of between 40 and 50,000 ounces a year, uh, but it makes very, very strong cash flow. If you look at our last few quarters, uh, we've generated very strong free cash flow. Um, and, uh, and really the company has a, a solid balance sheet. It's got no debt. Uh, we haven't raised equity in over three years. Um, but despite that, we've been able to advance our second project, which is called uh, Gold Rock. And uh, the goal is to get that into production in probably in late 2023. Uh, so we'd have two mines producing that would get us up around 100,000 ounces a year. And then really looking for other assets to require to, uh, to bring into production. We want to build um, a U.S. focused gold producer, um, particularly because we think uh, U.S. investors uh, would look for or would like a, a very uh, homegrown domestic uh, gold producer so that they don't have to worry about political risk in Kazakhstan or Papua New Guinea or Nicaragua or something like that. And right now, you know, Fiori gold at less than 50,000 ounces a year is the largest domestic, 100% domestic US gold producer. So we want to grow that into a size, you know, 150, 250,000 ounces. And that's kind of the path we're on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then brings me to the question, why, I, why you, or what, what do you think is why the valuation of the company is so cheap? I think it's a couple of reasons. I think, um, you know, the fact that our, our main operating asset had previously been in bankruptcy, um, it had actually mm -hmm. put the company that built it into bankruptcy very quickly. And so people, uh, I think they thought maybe there was something wrong with the mine or it wasn't going to work or whatever. And, and so we needed a couple of, uh, well, it turned out we needed a couple of years of, uh, of, of, you know, sort of steady operating history, I think, to convince people that it, it was in fact uh, working and that we, we understood it and, and had it operating properly. And then um, I think also the, the, you know, the mine had a relatively short life. It had a relatively short life when we bought it. Um, people wanted to see us, um, you know, continue to extend the mine life. And we just put out news yesterday that uh, showed that we've extended the mine life by two years. So the mine life now extends out into 2025. Um, and really, we've replaced all of the reserves and resources that we've mined since 2017. So we've been very successful at kind of incrementally um, extending the mine life and we're pretty confident that we can continue to do that so i think i think that's um that's starting to convince people that this won't be a short life mine mm -hmm. come to the pen mine before we go to a, a, a extension of it or the, the development project um, what is the maximum what you think you can produce from this mine is this the fifty thousand around or yeah. do you think uh, you have more ex uh, or then you must maybe expand the, the, the mill or facility or is this what is maximum? Yeah, it's probably close to its maximum right now. It's um, you know, it's it's a very simple mine. It's an open pit heap leach mine. So there's no mill per se. There's a there's a crusher uh, that mm -hmm. sits up on the leach pad um, where we crush the rock down um, 
and and then you know before we place it on the leech pad so that we get better recoveries um and and i think you know we can so right now we're putting uh 14, tons of ore every day through the rock uh, through the mill rather um we're permitted to go as high as 17,000 tons per day um, we are looking at maybe uh pushing up to that rate i don't think the deposit is big enough to go at a much higher rate than that and i think really where the growth lies is is from combining it with the gold rock project next door so that the two mines run together i mean they're only about 10 kilometers apart so mm -hmm. uh, they're not intended to run as completely separate operations um, and i think yeah that's where the growth will come from and also from um uh you know from adding uh, existing mm -hmm. assets mm -hmm. producing assets or near-term producing assets mm -hmm. Okay, I have a picture now on, on my right side of where you see the leech pad and the south pit and the north pit. Um, do you have enough exploration potential to keep the, the mine life for, or to extend the mine life for another two, three, four years? Yeah, we think so. I mean, you know, maybe I'm being optimistic, but I think, you know, right now Pan has about a five year mine life, and I'm, I'm confident that 10 years from now Pan will still have a five year mine life just chugging along. And, um, And, and the nice thing is that it's on a very large land package in Nevada. We have about 200 square kilometers um, under claim. All of it uh, is contiguous, so it all runs together. Um, and along that, uh, the trend, the geological trend that, uh, that hosts the pan deposit, there are uh, targets that were identified by the previous owners, but were never drilled. So soil anomalies, things like gold in soils, gold in rock chips, uh, arsenic and antimony, which are indicators of gold mineralization in the rock chips and soils and, and all these uh, sort of things that, that led people to pan in the first place. And we see these um, along the trend of this fault that controls the deposit. So, so we're pretty confident that, uh, that, that there's lots of exploration targets, lots of room. We're not confined by geology. We're not confined by our land position. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, we're, we're, we're going out and drilling some of those, uh, some of those targets uh, for the first time this year. Okay, then go uh, come to the extension or to the, the, the development project to the Gold Rock. Uh, yeah. You said it's only 10 kilometers away. Yeah. Uh, what is the same uh, kind of stuff? So heap leach, yeah. open pit, so that yeah, you exactly. can really use it on, on, on your facility by, by pen? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll be able to share some of the facilities, the, um, but it is very similar. It's in the same package of rocks. It's uh, It's very similar style, you know, shallow near surface um, oxide material that's going to be heat bleached. Um, we will probably have to build a, a crusher over at uh, the Gold Rock project and then also build leach pads over there because you have to build leach pads somewhere. And it's just as easy to build them close to the mine as it is to haul the rock all the way back to uh, to Pan. But what we'll probably do is look at taking what's called the loaded carbon. So the way a leach mine works is you 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 pile the stuff on a on a big plastic liner. Um, you mm -hmm. put the leach solution on it. It dissolves the gold, and then in order to get the gold out of the solution, you actually run it over a charcoal that's made from coconut shells, and the charcoal grabs the gold out of the solution. And so, what we'll probably do is take that loaded charcoal or carbon, as we call it, and we'll truck that over to Pan. Uh, it's uh, you know it might be a five ton truck a couple of times a week, so it's a relatively small uh, a small um, amount of material to move. And then we'd use the existing facilities at Pan uh, to strip the gold out of that and, and actually refine the gold and produce the Dory bars that we sell uh, at the end product. So, um, you know, we'll try to use as many of the existing facilities at Pan uh, as we can. And certainly it'll be the same team, the same, you know, power line, the same access roads, um, you know, the same administrative staff. All of those will, will work on both projects. So that's mean in general, both projects bring the, the uh, uh, OPEX down also they are all yeah. in substantial cost it should definitely bring the um, bring the uh, at least the overhead part of the cost down um, because you know not only will you be sharing costs between two sites but you'll be increasing the number of gold ounces that you're sort of spreading that that sort of fixed administrative cost over mm -hmm. um, okay uh, permitting permitting is yeah. always an issue by mines uh, yeah. we know <laughs> uh, yeah. how's gold rock looks here yeah so so gold rock is uh is in a very nice position in that it's been through the federal permitting process in the us which is the long painful process and in fact it took almost eight years to permit uh, gold rock um, the previous owners started permitting the process back in uh, 2010 uh, we got the permit in uh, 2018 and it was the full environmental impact uh, statement uh, um, uh, you know process so it's the most rigorous process that you can go through in the us 
Um, we still have to get state permits, um, you know, things like uh, dam permits and permits for the leach pads and things like that. But those are more sort of routine permits that you get. And of course, Nevada is a is a mining friendly state. The regulators understand mining. They're they're very used to permitting these kind of things. Um, so so we don't see any major problems there. I mean, we've obviously allowed for uh, a significant amount of time. I think we've allowed for about a year uh, to get all of our state permits in Nevada, which is probably more time than we'll need. But uh, we wanted to make sure that we uh, we left ourselves enough time in case there were any hangups, but mm. we don't expect any. So, what you must do that you can bring a gold rock now into the production, or how the timelines looks now? Yeah. So the we just finished a, what's called a preliminary economic assessment uh, earlier this year, and um, you know the the preliminary economic assessment kind of gives a first view of the economics of it, and and that looks pretty promising. Um, and then the next stage, of course, is to go, you can go into a pre-feasibility study and then into a feasibility study, but we were pretty confident that we understood the deposit well enough. So we went straight into a feasibility study. Uh, we've been doing a large drilling program. We're going to drill about 60,000 meters of drilling, most of that to continue to grow the resource, but also uh, metallurgical drilling, uh, geotechnical drilling, what's called condemnation drilling to make sure that you don't put any of your facilities on top of uh, another ore body. Um, and all of that is going on right now. And, and that will feed into this feasibility study um, that will be completed towards the end of next year. Um, there's quite a lot of work to do on that. And, and that feasibility study will really nail down the design parameters and the configuration and all the rest for the mine. And then with those kind of design elements in place and knowing exactly what we're going to build, um, that will let us start the state permitting process. And so the plan is that you know the mine construction will be completed uh, towards the end of 2023. And we'll start stacking gold and uh, and uh, sort of start stacking ore and producing gold at that point. Mm -hmm. I, I see in the PA that the, the pre capex pre production capex are around sixty five million. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how you want to finance this? Do you think you can create enough cash flow out of the pen that you uh, can finance this, or yeah. you say um, no, we go to then to a market or we make that or whatever? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously, if we continue to generate healthy cash flow, we can fund uh, at least a portion of it. Um, it reduces our need for external financing. But I don't think PAN is going to generate enough to to fully fund Gold Rock. Um, so the goal would be probably to do a typical debt equity mix uh, to fund it, uh, to fund the construction of that. And, and we're pretty confident in our ability to do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have no debt right now. And, and so we, you know, we have a, a pretty good capacity to take on debt. And the second one is that I think um, a lot of lenders, when they look at this, will see that what you're really building is an expansion to an existing cash flowing asset as opposed to a brand new asset. And so the risk profile is a lot lower uh, for the lenders. And that tends to attract, um, you know, I guess a better quality of lender. You're not going to the lenders of last resort. Um, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully that will reduce the cost of capital. But again, that, you know, that's all. Uh, and, and of course, we've been talking to potential lenders already just to get them familiar with the project and make sure they're watching us. And, you know, keeping an eye on it as they go. Um, and, and we'll start talking to them more seriously next year. Yeah, okay. That, that's the point. And I think you need one uh, then maybe end of next year that you'll really go in serious discussion with, with some lenders yeah. to, to finance this project. Then the, exactly. the, 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 you build the mine is 2023 or 2022, yeah. I think, or 2022. <laughs> Yeah, it'll, most construction will be in 2023. And, 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 you know, depending on how long it takes to, uh, to uh, deal with the funding, uh, we may be able to accelerate that, um, you know. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I see now another project is the Gold Eagle project, but you're yeah. coming up with, with a really good, relatively good uh, uh, ounces of uh, mm -hmm. different categories. Can you tell me a little bit more about this project? Yeah, that's um that's an interesting project. It was the third asset we picked up out of the bankruptcy transaction, and um and you know one of the neat things about you know the this um this uh, sale out of the bankruptcy transaction is if you look at Pan, um you know Pan I think in the last quarter generated about eight million in free cash flow, um and uh, and and that was in one quarter. Um, we bought all of these three assets for five million dollars in cash back in 2016. So, you know the return on that initial investment has been pretty spectacular. Um, but Gold Rock was kind of a, an overlooked third asset that came with this package. It's in Washington State. Um, it's up actually near the Canadian border in northeastern Washington, just outside a town called Republic, Washington. And Republic is um, it's a sort of rural community. It's uh, it's an old uh, historical uh, mining district. There's mining has been going on there since the 1800s. In fact, 
Uh, the last two mines actually went on what's called care and maintenance in 2017. They're two mines owned by Kinross called um, Buckhorn and Kettle River. And, uh, and of course, other companies have been mining in the area. Hecla had been mining in the area and whatnot. And anyway, so we, we picked up uh, Golden Eagle. Um, we just recently put out a, a resource estimate on it. It has about 2 million ounces of measured and indicated uh, resources at, at a grade of over a gram. Um, it is refractory, so it would need a mill. It's not going to be an open pit heap leach operation. Of, it, it is an open pit, but not a heap leach operation. Um, but the biggest constraint we have on, on, on Golden Eagle is that the land that it sits on is relatively small. Um, and so if we were going to put an open pit on there, we would need to extend the edges of the pit into the ground that's controlled by our neighbors. And our neighbors in this case are Hecla. <laughs> and so we have been talking with Hecla off and on for the last couple of years, trying to see if we can do a, you know, some kind of an agreement with them to either get access to their ground or to maybe combine our assets. You know, they've been doing a lot of exploration in the area. Uh, they've told us they have a million and a half to two million ounces, they think, uh, drilled out. Um, and we thought, well, let's combine the, the projects. And I think, you know, particularly if we were to combine them in a joint venture uh, and then maybe spin them out and, and give them their own management team and just keep our ownership in the in the, in the the joint venture in the separate company. But uh, Heckless just been, they've been very frustrating to deal with. Um, they, they, you know, they, they, to say they dragged their feet would be a, a, an understatement. But anyway, I mean, fortunately, um, the cost to us uh, as Fiore to carry that project is about 10,000 US dollars a year. So it's it's not a drain on our finances to hang on to that project. And and I'm hoping at some point, you know, Hecla will, will come to the table and, and agree to a, a you know a deal. If not, you know, we'll we'll try and find some other way to unlock value there. But, uh, but right now it's a nice option. Mm -hmm. Then two million ounces is not bad. It's a good number. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I think you get zero value in your share price from this project yeah. yeah we think so too and i mean if you if you looked at spinning that out you know i mean it, you know a similar size project would be integra resources uh you know uh, i think it's called florida uh project in um, or delamar project rather in idaho and you know i think uh integra has a 350 or 400 million dollar market cap on that one development stage asset alone so you know here's golden eagle sitting in a 165 million dollar market cap company Fiore um, getting no value at all. So I, I think the, the, you know, the, the thesis behind spinning it out and adding value is, to, is a good one. But, but yeah, we need, to, we need some cooperation from Hecla. Mm -hmm. But this is really interesting option. So, yeah. um, and then you, you're thinking on um, uh, uh, merger and acquisition, merger, yeah. more acquisition yeah. than merger, I think. Yeah. So, you know, uh, um, look, we recognize that as a, as a sub 50,000 ounce producer, we're kind of off people's radar. We're small, even though we're very profitable, um, particularly for institutional investors in the US. You know, we, we're a little small for them to be investing in. Um, <clears throat> and so the idea would be that, you know, we would add existing producing assets. We think there are other assets in the Southwest United States in particular that would be a good fit with us. Um, you know, and we've been doing a lot of looking at projects over the last sort of year and a half. Um, we still haven't found one that fits exactly. Um, we've sort of decided to broaden our search a bit to look at uh, potentially, um, you know, other more uh, uh, early stage assets that we can bring into production. Um, there's some good ones of those out there. Um, but, you know, and, and we, we don't want to do a, an acquisition just for the sake of doing an acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's no sense in that. We want to, if we're going to buy a producing asset or a an asset that's near-term production, it has to make money because we we really operate Fiore as a as a business that that is designed to be profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, I'm absolutely on your side, and it makes absolutely no sense to acquire something only for the question that you acquire something. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you, the number itself alone, I, I see that the third quarter numbers are really great. So why you should uh, dilute your, your stock with uh, maybe not really 100% successful story. But do yeah. you really believe that you're coming up something in the next 12 months? In this I area? hope so. I hope so. It's, uh, it's taken longer than I thought um, to find something, you know, either, you know, there are projects that we've looked at that when you take a closer look at them, you realize that, you know, maybe the the resource model isn't isn't well supported or the, the the mine has problems that are you know you only see when you start digging in a bit closer um you know that the, the, you know either the mine life is very short or you know the, all kinds of different things we've discovered <clears throat> but um 
yeah, I, I think we'll get there. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting the, closer. The my fear is a little bit when you acquire something, your valuation is for me, from my point of view, a little bit too small. So you see yeah. some other companies, production companies, uh, then they uh, put a, a tag on it on the on the on the mine tag uh, pr uh, price number that's maybe yeah. too high and then you dilute your story a little bit yeah. too much on, on this. This is a little bit of fear what I have. Yeah. Uh, one question when the gold price move around $100, what this mean for your bottom line? What this mean for your earnings? <clears throat> Yeah, so um, you know, I think if you look at it, if gold price moves a hundred dollars, we're producing about fifty thousand ounces a year, so that's about an extra five million dollars on an annual basis. So, so that's mean five cents around. You yeah, have hundred well, million uh, out share, uh, uh, million shares yeah. outstanding around, so it's yeah. uh, five cent. Okay. Yeah. Um, shareholder base. You have around 100 billion uh, um, uh, shares outstanding. Um, yeah. So do you have bigger groups? Who are the owners of it? Yeah, it's interesting. We, uh, we, we really don't have any significant institutional holdings. We, um, we have a, there's a fund in uh, New York called uh, Don Smith and Associates. Um, they hold about 5%. Um, Kinross actually holds about 5% uh, of us. And then really the stock is very widely held. It's, in, it's individual investors in Canada, in the US, in Europe. Um, you know, some even I've looked at our share register, some in Hong Kong, but, uh, but for the most part, it's the US, Canada and, and Europe right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the three major points, but maybe you move your share price in the next 12 months. What can yeah. this then? <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's going to be, um, uh, you know, as people see Gold Rock moving towards production and, and get a little more certainty in that, getting some of the feasibility numbers out there, getting some of the CapEx numbers, um, you know, uh, I guess more nailed down. Um, we're hoping that we can bring those CapEx numbers down a bit um, through a couple of programs we're doing. Um, I think continued exploration at PAN, uh, you know, new discoveries there showing that that's going to have, a, again, a, a longer mine life, testing some of these new targets. And then, you know, really, I think the, the, the largest catalyst is going to be, um, you know, an acquisition, um, something that, that, you know, really sort of changes the company and that gets us on that track to a larger production profile. Mm -hmm. Tim, thank you. This was a, a great introduction to your company, first introduction. Um, ja, es war eine, eine Erstvorstellung von Fiori Gold und Sie sehen es ja selber hier schon. Ungefähr, das sind 6 Cent äh, Gewinn pro Aktie, das war ja die, die vom dritten Quartal. Ähm, 100 Dollar ungefähr beim Goldpreis machen ungefähr 5 Cent mehr Gewinn pro Aktie aus. Der Aktienkurs ist, wenn man das anschaut, bei 1,50. Ähm, der ist, äh, ja, okay, sage ich mal, ist super gelaufen seit dem Jahresbeginn, weil einfach die Leute auch auf die Idee gekommen sind, äh, hey, da, da tut sich was. Aber was ist wirklich die Story? Sie haben diese, diese Mine aus der Konkursmasse 2000. You bought this, this mine uh, 2015? 2016. 16, 16. Uh, the bankruptcy was 2015, sorry, that's what's yeah, right. Ja. Also sie hat diese Mine 2016 gekauft, seit 2017 sind sie eigentlich am Markt. Ähm, diese kleine Mine produziert bis zu 50.000 Unzen, das ist auch ungefähr das Maximum, was sie, was sie machen können äh, oder was Sinn macht, dass sie machen. Äh, sie sehen eh hier die Kosten, was sie ungefähr haben und äh, dabei verdienen sie super Geld. Äh, sie haben jetzt erst gerade das Minenleben um zwei Jahre äh, erweitert. Ich habe gesagt, das ist relativ überschaubar. Sie haben ein Minenleben ungefähr für die, für die nächsten fünf Jahre. Sie haben aber extrem großes Explorationspotenzial und äh, das bohren sie quasi in den nächsten Jahren einfach aus. Und er ist davon überzeugt, dass in zehn Jahren die Mine auch noch existiert und wahrscheinlich auch wieder fünf Jahre Minenleben haben. Äh, was aber spannend ist, sie haben daneben ein Go äh, Projekt, das heißt Gold Rock. Und das Gold Rock haben sie jetzt auch, ähm, ist es sozusagen ein Satellitendeposit von dem. Und auch dort hoffen sie dann, dass sie 2023 mit der Produktion beginnen. Äh, sie haben die ersten Genehmigungen schon erhalten. Sie müssen die Federal Genehmigung, Federal Genehmigung haben sie, aber die Startgenehmigung von Nevada haben sie noch nicht. Das dauert ungefähr ein Jahr und sie wir machen jetzt gerade äh, ein PA, haben sie gemacht und jetzt machen sie Feasibility Study dazu, äh, davon. Und... Ähm, die, kommt, die Kosten sind ungefähr 65 Millionen, das wollen sie dann anfangen nächstes Jahr äh, zu finanzieren, Fremdfinanzierung großteils, weil sie haben kein Fremdkapital, äh, das ist sehr positiv natürlich, dadurch kriegen sie natürlich auch leichter äh, Fremdkapital, überhaupt wenn man schon produzierende Mine ist. Spannend habe ich das dritte Projekt eigentlich gefunden, das Gold Eagle, das ist ja 2 Millionen Unzen 
Mine oder das, was Sie jetzt in verschiedenen Ressourcenkategorien haben. Das ist in Washington State und äh, der, Ihr Nachbar ist Heckler. Und Heckler, äh, ja, die kommen momentan nicht zu Potte, weil eigentlich wäre eine Idee gewesen, dass Heckler auch ihre Projekte dort einbringen und dann bringen sie es eigentlich gemeinsam an die Börse und man hat einen Anteil äh, von dieser Spinco. Ähm, oder es wird den Aktionären dann aufgeteilt, denn eins muss man halt einmal sagen, die Bewertung des Unternehmens ist relativ gering, es sind ungefähr 100 Millionen Aktien draußen, ist ein bisschen weniger, die ganze Marktkapitalisierung liegt ungefähr bei 150 Millionen, das ist nicht viel für eine Company, die 50.000 Unzen produziert, mit der Erweiterung dann 100.000 Unzen, aber wo auch noch ein Potenzial herkommt, und das ist das nächste, ist ein Projektakquisitionen. Sie schauen schon die letzten anderthalb Jahren sehr stark, dass sie Projekte finden, aber es ist extrem schwierig, interessante Projekte zu finden, vor allem auch die, die wirklich dazu passen zu dem Unternehmen. Und äh, sie schauen auch jetzt schon von Development-Projekten vor, haben es mehr Produktionsprojekte angeschaut. Aber das ist ja auch eine Frage des Preises. Die, die was produzieren, verlangen meistens auch relativ viel und äh, dann verwässert man sich seine eigene Story. Schauen, sie dürfen nicht vergessen, ich meine, vor ähm, vor äh, neun Monaten hat die Company äh, ja, äh, ein Fünftel von dem gekostet, was jetzt ist. Äh, er hat ja gesagt, er hat die Mine übernommen für 5 Millionen und im letzten Quartal haben sie allein 6, äh, 6 oder 8 Millionen Free Cash Flow gekauft. Also unglaublich, weil, wie sie günstig sie kaufen haben können. Und das zeigt auch, wie das Management tickt. Das gefällt mir sehr gut. Mir gefällt die Aktie generell sehr gut und ich hoffe, dass sie da jetzt eigentlich eine Basis ausbaut und dass ich eigentlich nur mehr die Chance habe, dort neu einzusteigen. Für mich ist das eine ganz spannende Aktie, unbedingt auf die Watchlist setzen und äh, ja, ich werde die Company auf jeden Fall weiter verfolgen. Tim, thank you for your time um, and uh, I must say it's an unbelievable, interesting uh, stock. Um, it's cheap, uh, has a cheap valuation on it and um, I think it's, it's Uh, I will try if I, if you're coming down to this 130 level, so the, what we have uh, one and a half week ago that I can buy some stock, but always when I go in, uh, it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> then then the, the, the share uh, moves, uh, price moves immediately. Is there any warrants outstanding, but maybe coming up, out uh, or something? Nothing. No, no, there's no warrants at all. Um, the only, uh, the only, um, You know, thing outstanding are some some uh, stock for, options. Yeah, for, that's for it. Management and so on. Yeah. yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Now, great. But this looks uh, really great. Hopefully, we can do another interview. Hopefully, in person yeah. next time. Yeah. Uh, PDSC is not uh, showing up next year. It's only a no, uh, virtual no. conference. Then normally I co uh, go to Toronto um, uh, on to the PDSC, uh, but not next year. But. Maybe we have time. We can do it uh, also to to uh, via internet and yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck and uh, right. thank you for the first introduction. Oh, thank you. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.